In this day and age, technology is being developed so fast that it's not all surprising to see it change faster than you can say Jack Robinson. But there are some that, in spite of technological advancements, stick around like glue. Let's take a look, shall we? Pagers. Back when the 70s rolled into the 80s, the idea of carrying portable communication device was a fascinating concept. So in the early 80s, the pager was born. It was a simple but ingenious device, a tiny gadget that could receive short text messages, or as we call them, pagers. No fancy screens or colorful emojis, just a simple message telling you who wanted to get in touch with you. The 90s brought the pager rage. Oh, they were everywhere. Doctors, business people, and even regular folk like old Marshall here had pagers hanging from our belts or tucked into our pockets. It was even worn sometimes as a fashion statement. If only I could take you back in time to show you what I mean. Mobile phones are still a luxury then, and not everyone could afford them, but pagers were more affordable and allowed people to stay connected when they were away from home or the office. If someone needed to reach you urgently, they sent you a pager message with the phone number and then you'd have to find a payphone or landline to call them back. Ah, those were the days. And now, you might wonder if pagers are still around in this age of smartphones and instant messaging, and the answer is yes, they are. Pagers work well in areas with limited or no cell phone coverage, like remote locations or underground facilities, making them great for miners and other sectors that have a need for such devices. They don't have all the bells and whistles of a smartphone, but in some situations, that's precisely what makes them valuable. Windows XP. Before Windows XP came along, we had a few different versions of Windows, and some of them were a bit clunky and had some quirks. But when XP arrived in 2001, it was a digital dream come true. It was user-friendly, stable, and brought a whole new level of visual appeal to our computer screens. The Start button became our gateway to a world of programs and features and the iconic blue and green background became a familiar sight to millions of users. Windows XP ran on a wide range of computers from the most basic to the more powerful ones. It supported a vast array of software and hardware making it accessible to a broad audience. It quickly became the operating system for millions of computer users worldwide. It was the heart and soul of our digital lives. And even though it's no longer officially supported by Microsoft, Microsoft, Windows XP still lingers in some corners of the digital world. And that brings me to why Windows XP stood the test of time. It's like an old friend we can't bear to say goodbye to. It served us well for many years, and its stability and reliability made it a favorite of both home users and businesses alike. It brought people together in the digital realm and played a role in shaping the modern computing landscape. Thanks, Bill Gates. Landline phones. Long, long ago, people relied on landline phones to connect with one another. These magical devices were connected to the walls of our homes, usually in mom's kitchen. And when they wanted to call someone, you had to pick up the receiver and dial their number on a rotary or push button dial. When landline phones were first created, they were truly revolutionary. Imagine being able to talk to someone far away without having to send letters to travel great distances. Well, you don't really have to imagine. We can do it anytime we want nowadays. But back then, it was real groundbreaking stuff. Being able to hear the voices of our friends and loved ones, even if they were miles away. As the years passed, technology evolved and mobile phones entered the scene. But landline phones stood their ground and are still around today. Even in this age of smartphones and instant messaging, many homes still have them, acting as a reliable backup when the power goes out or the cell phone signal is weak. Plus, landline phones have a certain charm to them. Nothing beats the feeling that comes with using a landline. Hello, Marshall calling. Are you enjoying the video so far? Give it a like if you are. And don't drop the call because there's more in store for you in the next one. Floppy disks. Back in the distant past of computing, when dinosaurs still roamed the Earth, we didn't have these fancy flash drives or cloud storage. No, no, we had floppy disks, small and flat as pancakes, but they held a world of wonders for us. Floppy disks were introduced in the 1970s. They were used for storing and transferring data from one computer to another. The original floppy disks were truly floppy, made of a thin magnetic material encased in a plastic sleeve. We'd insert them into the disk drives of our 
our computers, and once you hear a click, you could read or write data on them. They didn't hold much, but a little was all you needed in those days. As time went on, technology kept advancing, and the humble floppy disk started to fall out of favor. But what's surprising is that there are major companies that use floppy disks to this day. British Airways still keeps their Boeing 747 information on them. And it's not just them. Tons of other industries still need floppies, so it looks like they're not going away anytime soon. Dot matrix printers. When computers were still finding their footing, people needed a way to bring their digital creations into the physical world. Enter the dot matrix printer, the printing marvel of the 70s. It was noisy, it was slow, and it got the job done. Dot matrix printers were everywhere up until the 80s. They were no-brainers for printing documents, forms, and even those computer game graphics that many of you might only know from retro gaming collections. But let's fast forward to today. You might think that dot matrix printers have faded away like yesterday's news, but they're still being used, even in this modern age of sleek laser printers and fancy inkjets. You can get one for yourself from Epson if you really wanted one. They are still used in some industries that need continuous form printing like receipts and invoices in places like banks and supermarkets. They're also used in industrial settings, where their ruggedness and ability to print on various materials come in handy. Keyboard in the early 1870s, a clever man named Christopher Latham Scholes and his team invented the typewriter. Now, when the typewriter was first created, it had a problem. Typists were too fast. The keys of the early typewriters were arranged alphabetically, and when typists got speedy, the mechanical arms that held the letters would jam. So they came up with a design for the keyboard layout we know today as QWERTY. The name QWERTY comes from the first six letters in the top row of keys. And just like Wildfire, the QWERTY keyboard quickly caught on. Typewriters became wildly popular, and the QWERTY layout became the standard for decades to come. It carried over to the early computers, and eventually when personal computers became a common sight in our homes, the QWERTY keyboard was there waiting for us. It has become so deeply ingrained in our culture and muscle memory that it's everywhere. We use it on our computers, laptops, smartphones, tablets, and even some smart TVs. It has stood the test of time because it's familiar, comfortable, and efficient for typing. Sure, there have been other keyboard layouts proposed over the years claiming to be more efficient, but none of them have been able to dethrone QWERTY. The QWERTY keyboard has become a part of our digital DNA, and changing it would require relearning how to type for millions of people. This one then can't be replaced, no matter how much we try. Well, there you go. So which of these do you still use today? Share your story in the comments section below. And hey, if you liked the video, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.